It's time to start the cool stuff. Again. Um, the, again. The, the, other, the other stuff wasn't the cool stuff. That was the, that was the build up, right? The, uh, you know, building anticipation. It's a, it's a narrative device. So you guys can take that and use it. Okay. Um, all right. So what we're going to do is uh, start to map these rectangles. Okay. The rectangles are going to create little boxes that we're going to morph these things into. Um, we do need to find the normals of these points. Um, so we actually do have them already here with um, the surface divide. So what's cool about the normals is we can just use that uh, as our sort of our plane. Um, so uh, let's do, let's go to, I don't know if we could just plug that in, if that's going to work, honestly. Doesn't seem like that's going to just work that way. Flatten that. I don't think, yeah, we're going to need something else on there because it's just going to the ground. Okay, so what we need to do is uh, use these normals to uh, map our planes that we're going to work on. So let's go to plane, and we're going to do plane normal. We're going to use, um, th there's the origin of the plane, which is going to be at each of the points. And then this uh, z-axis direction of the plane is going to reorient them so that they all face outward. See that? OK, and we're going to use that as the p input for our rectangles. So let me turn this stuff off. And now you can see what we have here is um, a little rectangle that's being built around our hardware. Mm -hmm. I'm also going to turn off some extra stuff. Turn that off. Okay. So this rectangle is critical. It's going to become the frame within which we build all of our hardware pieces. Um, so we're going to calibrate that very carefully. Let's go to our little mathematical operator that we're using to switch to inches. We're going to pull that down and uh, let's start operating on this with a slider. So um, our piece of hardware is square. So we're going to use the same dimension in the x and y direction. The um, challenge here, though, that uh, though that you guys need to be aware of is that rectangles can either be from an origin point going one direction in each axis, or it can be going two directions in each axis, which would make it centered on that point. So in order to do that, <coughs> we need to create this little icon right here, right? It's saying negative one to one. That means that it is a keyword parameter. Well, you're not wrong, but you're not right either. Um, so yes, it's a parameter. We're inputting a parameter, but it takes the form of a what? From something to something. Yes, domain, absolutely. So we're going to create a domain for this thing. Um, so we're going to go to um, math, domain, construct domain. For the construct domain, um, we need a, a from and a to, right? So we're going to create a slider on the side that says 0 to, I don't know, 1.00, something like that. One foot is a large, large radius to create, or distance to go both directions. So um, let's plug, let's start at like 0.16, whatever. I don't know, something low. Um, I'm going to plug that into domain A, or I'm sorry, domain B, because that's going to be my, my 2, right, is a positive number. I'm going to go from a negative number to a positive number. So let's go back up into math, and let's get an operator as a negative. So we're going from negative 0.16 to uh, positive 0.16. Oh, I'm sorry. We have uh, this thing we needed. We need to put it back here. Boop. That. So from a negative to a positive. Um, and then we plug that into both x and y. And that is a really, really, really small value. Oh, because that's right. It's inches. <laughs> that's why. Um, so let's go to uh, change our maximum to um, 18. I don't know. It's probably going to be way too much, but hit OK. So here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this thing out so that my rectangle sort of kind of goes outside of um, the center point of each of those circles. Is that fair enough? 
case you guys aren't following, right? That's all we've done so far. All right. Now, to the fun stuff, to the box morph. Um, these are going to be used to create boxes. Um, in order to uh, utilize those boxes, we need we need to kind of work backwards from box morph. Okay, um, so let's go. And I actually always forget where it is, but I think it, there it is. Um, so we're going to grab box morph. Let's drop that in. And we're going to grab um, surface box. Okay, um, or yeah, surface box. Well, yeah, we do need surface box. Um, so surface box is going to be used to take these rectangles and basically create uh, a volume off of them. So we're going to put the rectangle in, um, oh, we need a base surface. So let's uh, first convert them to surfaces, then plug them into surface box. Where'd you get surface box from? They're all under uh, transform morph, transform these two. Morph. If you guys are falling behind, um, I, I kind of think it's more important for you guys to just like you know get the the gist of it and then you can follow around because it's not many tools it's not many nodes you'll be able to catch up in no time um, so just sit back and relax while I explain it all okay um, so like I said box uh, surface box is going to create that uh, that particular box so we have um, we're gonna use What's that? Oh, tra oh, this. This is trans. Transform. Transform morph. Sorry. <laughs> um, we need to create a height for... I don't know why it's saying domain, though, because I didn't want to use a domain on these. Morph. We're going to have the geometry, the reference box. I wonder if I could just use that. No. Why is that a domain? I don't think of that. Because it's going to a different point. Hmm. Let me ponder that one for a little bit. Just a sec. All right, guys. So um, let's bring it back in and start paying attention again. All right. So um, we do need a domain, but we can just construct a 100% domain. Okay. So uh, we're going to go to uh, math, domain construct domain and um, with uh, I guess we have to do that's the surface so we're gonna construct this at a hundred percent so that's zero to one and that should be fine just like that um, but it looks like it's the wrong size why is that bigger oh because it needs to be reparametrized okay so um, we need to reparametrize and that's gonna be uh, exactly the size of our box that's a good thing um, and then we're going to recalibrate the height. So um, I'm not sure exactly what height we're going to need. So let's just pull this in. And uh, I do know that I want it to go to, well, it doesn't really matter which side, but I want it to go to the back side relative to the um, X plane. So I'm going to make this a negative. Um, whoops, that's subtraction. Negative. So we have this box that's kind of extending backwards. Now, um, surface box is going to be a reference box for us to take a geometry and then morph it into that box. Okay, that's a that's a very important distinction. Um, so uh, let's see here. Let's go to um, back down to our geometry down here. Um, we're going to need to get uh, let's see, transform, morph, uh, what is B? I forget what B box is. Bounding box, where is that? Surface primitive. Okay, so under surface primitive, you're going to use bounding box. That's the one Kyle did on. Huh? That's the one Kyle did that, that the fire point? Yeah, sort of. Um, so here it's going to ask you for the geometry it's going to contain um, and then like a, a orientation plane. So we can 
fiddle around with this a couple of different ways, but ultimately when you go up to your geometry, right, use the generic geometry input and then say set one geometry and select a poly surface. This has to be one element. We're going to um, put that in there and take a look at it, right? So basically it creates this little boundary box around this thing. That's important to note because that boundary box will become the boundary for all of these. So once we um, start plugging the rest of it in, you'll see a lot of magic starts to happen, right? So the base geometry is going to be the geometry that we're trying to um, that we're trying to send out. So that's going to be um, this, I believe, and then we're going to have the uh, reference box, which is going to be these. I might have that backwards actually. And T is target. Oh, I do have this backwards. Hang on. Um, let's go back to my notes real quick. I don't use this that often, so I get these configurations mixed up. Um, yeah, okay. So um, our surface box is obviously the target box because that's where we want the geometry to go to. Um, the geometry that we're going to move is the geometry within the bounding box. And then the um, bounding box is going to be our reference box. So this is going to take a couple minutes to run. And what you're going to find is the geometry has automatically mapped to every single one of these conditions. Pretty powerful stuff, right? Yeah. So let's turn all this extra stuff off so that you can just look at it. Yeah, so you want it to go outdoors? Yeah, so you put the spider on the outside? You would just uh, switch this to be instead of, uh, uh, instead of a positive and negative, or instead of a negative and positive, uh -huh. and then you could, um, you'd have to flip the, the model around because the orientation plane would be backwards. Okay, what's that? So um, if you guys aren't calibrated perfectly, it's because your rectangle is off, right? So what I'm seeing here is like 0.469. I actually got that pretty darn centered um, on mine, but yours might not be. So if, if you're looking to um, recalibrate it, make sure that rectangle is relative um, to your geometry at about, you know, just ever so slightly outside of the center point. It's not going to be perfect, right? But... And especially once you're doing this on warped surfaces, it's definitely not going to be perfect. But it is tremendously powerful. Because imagine when you're trying to do this, and you're not just using a regular array pattern, right? You're actually having to rotate it like 1.7265 degrees for every panel that's being twisted, right? In all three axes. So um, anyway, that's how you apply hardware. Um, what questions do you have? Yeah, so the top pieces, that's a good uh, good point. Um, a lot of times when you're working on full field geometry like this, it's easier to um, map the whole system and ignore the fact that there are overruns, you know, like it extends beyond the border of the system, and then just uh, trim them off later. Oh, I see. Yeah. Or if you're doing a rendering, for instance, like um, let's say... Uh, where's my, let me turn these back on. There we go. So let's say you guys are doing a rendering. Um, and uh, these things are like extruded and they're kind of like, you know, something like that. Like you're never going to see that in a rendering because it exists behind the plane of the geometry, right? So this popping out a little bit maybe. Right, you're never you're never going to see the missing geometry because it exists inside of other geometry. So if it's purely for rendering purposes and representation purposes, you don't even have to worry about it. You don't have to worry about trimming it out. You're never going to see it. Where you do see it, that's when you do have to worry about it. Okay, so then you'll just do like a Boolean function either in um, Grasshopper or you could do it afterwards in Rhino depending on what's easier for you at the time. Okay, cool. So... Um, 
We're going to do some like calibrating and stuff with this sort of hardware function for a number of different exercises throughout the rest of the semester. So I encourage you to make sure that you learn this, learn it well, um, because we're going to use it a lot. Okay. Um, so I'm going to give you guys time, work time to catch up on this, and then uh, you can ask all the questions that you want. But I think that's going to be uh, it for our primary lessons today. No questions? Troubleshooting? Yeah. Okay.